Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Laura Rogers and this is SharePoint Power Hour. This uh, is a show that I do every Wednesday at 11 Central and I cover different topics with SharePoint and Office 365. Today I decided to talk a little bit more about Power Apps and talk about all the different types of controls that we can use in Power Apps like radio buttons and toggle switches and all those fun things and which are especially useful when we start using our Power Apps on mobile devices. So if you've never been to SharePoint Power Hour before, welcome. And I have a Slack channel, which is the name of my SharePoint training company, IW Mentor. It's iwmentor.slack.com. And you can always look in the description of this YouTube video to get to be able to fill out the form to join the Slack channel if you've never joined it. And this is where we have our lively discussion. And hey, everybody, hey, Todd. And this is where we uh, chat during Power Hour and um, where we're able to, you guys ask questions and we can try different things. It's very, it's a very informal demo. I do plan on creating for my training company, creating some Power Apps training um, some very, you know, polished, more formal training. But as far as these power hour demos, they're really just sort of on the fly, trying things out, demoing things, having conversations about it. And it's, uh, it's fun and informal. So, hey, yeah, it's, it's good to see. I see some familiar faces in the chat window, people that I, uh, have known for years and uh, it's good to see you guys. Um, <laughs> and Todd Clint over here, he's got a, netcast that he does as well, his SharePoint admin netcast. Um, so he's toddclint.com, T-O-D-D-K-L-I-N-D-T. And um, he's got a Slack channel also. So I join in there sometimes um, for his live show where we uh, have lively conversations there too. So <laughs> I will go ahead and get started. And what I'm going to do is kind of start digging into just going straight into Power Apps and digging into all these different types of controls we have and play around with what kind of, you know, what we can do with them and uh, what some maybe advanced settings are going to be with them. And um, I encourage you if you have Office 365, if you have Power Apps to go ahead and try it along with me and uh, figure out as well, because this is a brand new product that is, so I was telling at my, I run the Birmingham, Alabama SharePoint user group, and I did a presentation on Power Apps there yesterday. And that's what I was telling these guys is that Power Apps is a new product. I mean, dig in there and figure it out. It's ripe for writing blog posts and finding little cool things you can do here and there. And it's just a whole world waiting to be explored. So <laughs> that's what we're doing. We're exploring SharePoint explorers, right? Okay, so let me go ahead and share my screen. And there we go. This is Power Apps, and I'm going to start by creating a new Power App, and I'm going to base it on just a big blank canvas just so we can have plenty of room to move around. So I'm going to use this is the client software, the Power Apps. I installed it from the Windows Store. And I'm going to just pick a blank tablet layout. So this gives me, you know, a completely blank slate to start from, starting from scratch. And I have the ability to um, just figure out what my data source is going to be and figure out um, what forms and controls and just, you know, whatever I want to do with my app. So first of all, I'm going to have a data source of SharePoint. So I'm going to use a SharePoint list. I've already created in the list of all the connections you can use for Flow and Power Apps. I've already created the connection to SharePoint. So here's my little, well, no, that's Outlook. Let me see. SharePoint is right here. So um, I'm connecting, I'm authenticating to SharePoint, and then I just need to pick which site. So sometimes it's easier to just put the URL of your site in here. So I'll just uh, type it the long way. Slash power apps. I think that's my little subsite demo subsite that I have. 
All right, so it immediately gives you a list of your lists. Notice this is custom lists in your site. It's not showing lists that are not custom, like other different types of lists, like tasks and issues and things, and it's not showing libraries. So just kind of that's one of the little drawbacks as of, as of now is just that custom lists are pretty much what you have to work with here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this test list. So we're going to go ahead and go into this test list and create a few just different types of fields just in the SharePoint list to be able to, um, you know, try them out and and use different types of controls with different types of fields and show how it works. So I'm going to flip over to my SharePoint site in the browser and go to this site slash power apps and go to my test list and I'll go ahead and go to start with my site contents and here's my test list so what I'm going to quickly do is just create a bunch of different types of fields in here to just be able to represent um, what we can do with different types of controls and the purpose of this is to be able to show you that behind the scenes um, in SharePoint it's really just you know kind of we're just going to be pulling the fields in so once we get over to power app so you can kind of see and understand where those fields are coming from that's why we're creating them as different types of fields here so when we reference them from within power apps you'll be able to see what um, you'll be able to you know have that frame of reference as to what they're what they're pointing to so date I'll do a date and time field and do a I'll do a couple I'll do an, another number all right and then uh, I'm gonna create a person or group ju just for fun I don't think there are any special fun controls that necessarily have to do with people or groups but we'll go ahead and try it out how's the volume sound guys because i was playing around my microphone settings i think it got it a little bit better um i was trying to fine tune it oh, let me see i think as long as i just talk a little louder as i go then um it helps okay um, is there a similar limitation on site columns as there is on the only custom list types? Um, you can use site columns, but you there are some types of columns. Now, this was just a little test that I did. There are some types of columns that aren't necessarily going to show that are, that are going to pull in to power apps um, or that you won't see some columns like when you're doing a gallery some types of columns just aren't available to display in the gallery and then when you're doing a form you're actually going to come across you're going to have more compatibility with more types of form uh, fields in there so as far as my demo list i'll go ahead and just create a few items in this list um let's see title I guess I could have done this ahead of time, right? I guess I spent more time playing with my microphone than I did just, you know, building some demo data. Everybody having a good January? Let's see. Um, oh, Sandy says, I found a sort of workaround for the custom list limitation by using an event content type, for example, in a custom list because she wanted to update a SharePoint calendar with a Power App. Certainly not ideal. Yes. And I think I was actually trying that when I was doing my little issues list over here. I created it as a custom list and I was playing with that the other day as well, Sandy. And I added the issue content type to it just so I could see, you know, that way it pulls in all the fields that come out of the box with issue lists, but, you know, you, you even you weren't creating it as an issue list. So, yeah, and that also with the non-custom list that gives you, um, 
with the non-custom list, you can't, you don't get this modern view. So as long as they're custom list, you're gonna, everything is gonna be modern view in your in your site. Alrighty, so I'm going to um, refresh that. Actually, let's see. I'll, probably when I when I select it, it'll just start pulling in all the data. Okay, so now I have my data source. So now what I want to do is start putting nice pretty things on my forms. So this is where we're going to play around with the different controls. I have, you can see that I have a lot of different things to pick from up here. I've got just good old text boxes. You can click on some of these and they'll give you multiple other choices like pen input, which maybe you could use for signatures, right? Um, and then when you go to this controls bo button, there are actually a whole bunch of other really interesting looking controls. Um, and then the gallery, we talked, we did a whole power hour last time about galleries. And then um, forums are going to be what people are filling out. Media, this is where you can also, this is another type of control where you can interact with your, when you're using your phone or your tablet, interact with the camera or the video and audio microphone and things like that from your phone to be able to take pictures and have them be part of your app, etc. And then charts are another really fun part of, of Power Apps that you could use to uh, display your data, data in a nice pretty way. I don't know if we're going to necessarily get through every single one of these, but we're going to at least try some of them out and put them on the forms and um, you know kind of see what they do. So first of all, I have to have something to put the controls on. So I'm just gonna put an edit form here, and then I have to, I only have one data source in here. I'm going to use the one that I have, and I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna type test, and test is the name of my data source. So that one's kind of, it's a little misleading because when you start, it prompts you to actually create the data source again, but I had already created it. So then you gotta know to just type test in there. And then another little weird, uh, nuance in here <laughs> is going to be um, you can't really you're not really instantly on the interface for adding your fields but if I click to add a custom card that is what pulls up this other little window that lets me start choosing which fields that I want to show on this form so just a couple of little tidbits I'll go ahead and make this form bigger put it over here and then I don't need this custom card, so I click custom card really just to make this window pull up over here. But what I wanted was just um, the ability to start putting these fields in that just exist in my list. So for example, so what? So there's the title field. So what order I click them on in here is the order they're going to start populating on my form. So you can see that these are all just pretty much standard field types in here. They're not really, you know, fancy radio buttons or anything, but this is kind of what you get just out of the box when you start adding fields. Now this date field, it actually knew ahead of time to put it as a date picker. And I can even pick for some of these, I can pick whether I want it to be editing a date or viewing text. So I can make you just be able to view the date if I wanted to. So that's a quick little way to be able to do that. And then for the person, I can view the lookup or edit the lookup. So this is actually doesn't look like a people picker in SharePoint, does it? It looks like a drop down box. But that is going to be my person picker. So from where we're going from here is we're going to start playing with um, inserting some different types of controls and then be able to tie them to our fields to make the controls do things in the fields. So um, let's go ahead and take something like a radio button. Now, when you create a uh, list in SharePoint, you create a choice field and you give it some different choices and you pull it into Power Apps, that's actually just going to create it as a drop down box by default. It's not going to create it as a choice field, at least last time I checked, <laughs> if, even if you have it set as a choice field in SharePoint. And it was the same way that you know, it worked that way in Info Path as well. But um, you could choose Radio Button as a type of control that you want to insert on here. So let me go ahead and take a few of these off just so that I have a little bit more sort of wiggle room down here. Just start playing with what I want 
for example, a radio button to do. So as soon as I insert radio button, it's going to stick them on my form. Now, it didn't put them in my form. So watch this, let me try it again. Let me see if it makes a difference when I select my form and then insert a radio button. Nope, it doesn't make a difference. So I can just put it wherever. It doesn't even have to be inside my form. All right, so it gives me items. So you'll notice, you've noticed this before that whenever you pick, um, like for example, a gallery, it had that same little items option. So for the radio button, it looks like it needs a list of items. So for the items, we're going to need some sort of data source to be able to tell it what to pick from. So it's not going to have like a nice little pretty picker, I don't think. See, for options, it just, it has nothing. Um, but it has, I have to go to advanced. And then I have to basically, I have to really just give it a list of items. It's not really going to have a nice little sort of pretty interface that you might be used to in SharePoint where you say, you know, this is the list of items and you just start typing them in there. So I need to reference an actual list of things. For this, we'll go ahead and tap into another, we'll go ahead and do another little data source. So for in SharePoint, I have a list of projects. So I'll just pull in the list of projects to be the things that you can pick from in the radio button. But then I still need to also attach it to what field the radio button needs to write to, right? So this can get a little interesting, right? Okay, so I'm going to go for items. I need to be able to have the data source. So I have to go pick what my other data source is gonna be. And I don't need to create this again, I really just need to add a new list. So I just collect, connect to the SharePoint site that I've already authentic, authenticated to. And then guess what? This could go across sites. So what do you guys think about? Uh, this is awesome that you can go across sites, first of all, and across web apps, across farms, across services. So it's kind of annoying that it prompts you to connect to your SharePoint site multiple times. But that's kind of good that you aren't stuck doing everything within a site, right? So I want to see what you guys think about that and if you've tried any of these things. I know Sandy has done some because she said she's done some Power Apps presentations, right? Um, so I'll go ahead and connect to projects and pull that in as well. So I could pull in multiple other lists from um, my SharePoint site. I could pull in issues, customers, etc. I'll just pull in projects and customers just for fun, just in case I need um, more of those. Maybe I'll do a list box that's got customer uh, that's got uh, you know projects or a list box that's got customers and radio buttons that have projects, and we'll kind of look at how those different ones work. And looking at the number of controls that exist on the insert tab we're definitely not going to be able to cover all of them but we're going to the important thing is that we're going to cover the concepts and how to get around in here and be able to figure out sort of because there is there are going to be some standard settings that you're going to be able to kind of dig into when you're using your different um, data sources so i'm still on my radio box i've got it selected so for items i'm going to type i'm just going to start typing projects and i can see that it knows that I've got a data source called projects and look how cool. So now it's actually showing my projects here. And if I have a lot of them, I could let it just have a scroll box. That's kind of awkward though, because it had a scroll button. But um, usually when you're using a radio button, kind of like the standard um, sort of best practice for radio boxes is for short lists of things when you have like two or three choices and drop down boxes are usually when you have longer choice amount, amounts of choices but notice a really nice thing about this radio this list uh, of radio buttons this is something you have never gotten in sharepoint and you've never gotten an info path the list of radio button choices is actually dynamic so even in SharePoint, when you're doing a lookup to something that's dynamic, it's always going to show as a dropdown. It's not radio buttons. 
and even in InfoPath, when you're putting radio buttons on um, on a form, you have to type in what the choices are that's like hard-coded onto the form. So this is unique. This is a dynamic list of radio button choices that you could be able to just change the SharePoint list and then it would update right there in the app. So now that I've got my nice little list though, how do I tie this control to it? I've got it showing the right items. Now I want it to actually be tied to the right field because I want it to write to maybe, let's just say text to. So whatever I choose here, I actually want to put that in my text to field. Okay, so let's see how that works. So we'll go to, we have no, um, like the little sort of easy options screen here. We have nothing for the radio buttons. We have some radio button options in the contextual ribbon. You'll notice the contextual ribbon everywhere in SharePoint. So when I pick a radio um, drop down box, I can choose, you know, how much space is between all the text. I can choose some padding, visibility and borders and things like that. Like for my border, I can say I want it to be navy blue and I want it to be maybe one pixel. So now I can see I've just created a nice little border around it. And then, um, so let's go look at what is, how do you connect it to what what data it's going to go to. So let, I'm just, instead of trying to dig through all these different properties over here, I'm going to be able to look at the same list of properties over in this advanced tab over here. So on select, on change, so, and here's data. Okay, so this is where um, it's going to have a default value. So if I want the default value value to be like Contoso project or something like that, that's where I could actually just type that here. So let's see if I do default, um, default Contoso project like that. And let's see what it does when I, I don't know if it's even going to be able to do anything yet. Let's, let me try and preview it. Nope. So I haven't connected it to like what the backend data needs to be. So it's not necessarily going to even know that, that you know, to be able to show that. Because there's a lot, I mean, it's, it's really pretty when you connect it to the data and you're al allowed to show what all the items are. But for it to set a field, like be connected to a field, that's actually pretty complicated. So let's go look at, for example, my text to my little text box. And let's go look at how it knows. This is how we're kind of working through this and, and seeing how everything functions in here. We're going to go see in this text box, how does it know what field? Okay, so it's parent.default. So this card that this control is in, card text to, this card is um, it's got a value here of this is my field. It's called text two. So when I click on the text box, it's actually just looking at the parent and the parent is the card that it's in. So what happens if I take my radio buttons, I'm just gonna delete it just for fun and just recreate it. And what happens when I put it inside of a card? Does that automatically make it connect to the data? No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and cu cut it and paste it. Now it can't, it still won't do it. Oh my gosh. So you can't put parent basically. So that concept that I did of having, you know, parent and just have it be inside of a card is not going to work for just having that list that I had and just being able to stick it in here. So that's fine. Okay. So for the card itself, how do we know? Okay. And I can unlock this. Okay. So by default, when I insert all these cards, they're nice and neat, just going down the form and see how it's got this little eye icon. Well, if I want to do advanced things with my fields in here, I can go to this advanced screen and I have to actually go out of my way to click this unlock button. So once I do that, it's actually going to change it to a little X. So when I'm taking just a glance at this, I'll be able to tell that it's been changed, like I've done something custom to it. 
So, and I just removed it completely from the thing. And so if I kind of wanted to start all over, I could just add it back like that. So I just added the card again. Okay, so for my card itself, let's go to the advanced screen. And I've got my data field is text two. So data field is in quotes, text two. <laughs> and then um, I'm going to see what my data field is for here, for this one. So instead of putting default Contoso project, I'm going to put text two. And it doesn't know it because it's not inside of the card. All right, so here's my, here's my control that I put on here as a radio button. Let's go ahead and do insert another one. So let's go unlock this, actually. I'm going to go unlock this uh, text two card unlock and I'm going to try this one more time look okay that's what it was I just had to unlock it see I had to unlock my card and then it let me put the radio button list inside my card ta-da all right now let me go ahead and drag and make my card a little bigger so now this way I'll be able to have text showing here and hopefully be able to make it so that it shows I'll put projects in here it shows what value that I select and make it the radio button right to that field so let me make this whole card bigger okay so unlocking the card that's the key here so when you unlock the card that's what lets you actually put a control into the card so for my data this text box says parent.default is the default. So let's go, now I put it in the same card with the same field, so I should be able to do parent.default. Oh, okay, so I created it as a form, but I created it as uh, like a, a, I didn't say like whether it's a new form or display form or what it's supposed to do, so. Um, Okay, so at least I have this, the ability to tie this to a specific list of projects and the ability to say which data it, this radio button connects to. Okay, so we got that far. Yes, unlocking is the key. What's tip of the day, right? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so now let's go and unlock this number control here. And I'm just gonna be able to scroll my form down. I'm gonna go unlock my number control over here and then let's try a toggle so I unlock that and I'm going to go insert a control called a toggle and the toggle is just going to be one thing or another right so let me expand this one down a little bit too. expand my whole let me select the whole card here okay and then I can take my toggle and put it down here now what are my toggle options going to be so when I'm dealing with a toggle, so I have this little toggle tab up here, and I've got value fill, which is blue. You can change it to red. And I've got handle fill, so that's gonna be the little handle thingy that you drag back and forth, and I can change that to maybe green. Let's see how ugly we can make it. And then rail fill is the little rail that you're dragging it on, see? So that's what, it, I kind of made it look really ugly on purpose. And then I can even have a border around my radio button and I can make a little bigger. Ooh, that's going to be really nice for mobile, right? All right, then what is my data going to be? So I'll do this item dot default parent. That's what I did. Instead of this item, it's supposed to be parent. Sorry. I like the way it pre-fills these in for me. Okay, so then I've got parent.default. So now that I've got this form, let's go ahead and make the form so that it is tied to a particular piece of data in my list so that maybe I could toggle between the items in my list and be able to even have those on the same screen and be able to you know, make it show the right item in the list according to what I click on. So that way we can work with you know having data here and testing it out. So let's go insert a gallery and we learned about galleries last week. 
So we'll go and insert a gallery, and then we're just gonna make it just plain old vertical text. And then, like we learned last week, we have to point it to, we're not, we didn't put anything pretty, any pretty little title or pretty branding on here yet. We're just going to say, I want this to be my test list. So this is the whole list of things, which is just one. And then we have to make this form so that it is going to show the item that I selected in here. So for the form itself, I gotta go, I gotta, basically I have to select the form. So I have to just make sure that I, see I'm not clicking on any of the specific controls. I just have the whole form selected. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna have to make it say which specific item is going to, it's going to show. So then I'm gonna say, um, and what, oh, I have to know the name of my gallery. So I have to give my gallery a nice name so that when I am deciding what to, to select from the gallery and I'm typing that in my other controls, I'll be able to give it a nice name so that what I'm doing right now is trying to select the whole gallery. Give it a nice name so that it will make sense to me as I'm kind of navigating around in my app. So to give it a new gallery, I can go here and rename it. I'm gonna call it Test List Gallery because when I'm clicking on something and I want that thing to show in the form, I have to know the name of the gallery and you know it just helps to have nice pretty names for them. Okay, so when I click on something in here, whatever item I pick, I want that item to be the one that this form is looking at. So again, I have to go click, select this whole form like that. And then for the item, I'm gonna say um, test, list gallery dot selected like that look how magic i did something right <laughs> so let, let me go ahead and go um, create a couple more items over in sharepoint so we'll go to my list okay here's my test list so i'm going to create the item a couple more items in the test list and then i'm going to go ahead and just refresh the data source and it'll just, you know, that will just have more items in there to kind of click around in. Okay, so new, no, not a new list. Power apps, list, test. There we go. Okay, and then this could be a nice uh, number field, some text more stuff and this way i'll have some values in here maybe that i can see as i'm going through you know trying out these different controls we'll do a slider control next and we'll show how that can be used um, especially for numbers so you can make the slider control default to a certain number and then as people slide it back and forth you have a minimum and a maximum all right so we've got 15 minutes left so we'll be able to demo that as well Okay, so um, first of all, the key was to unlocking a card so that you can insert um, items in it. And then the key to making it show a certain item in the form is you have to say, you know, which gallery and, you know, the thing that I'm selecting to make it show that. And then what I want to do now is just go refresh my list, my test list, just so that I'll have the, that other item that I created in here. Okay, and I made this way too big. Okay, so there's the second item. So now when I see when I select this second item, it shows the second item here. Oh, okay. So now I want to make this toggle button get put a certain value, like have to do, I want it related to this value so that maybe when I change it this way, it shows a one and this way it shows a two. And if you know, you could do it like with a Boolean field with a yes or no, or with two different choices maybe that you have or even numbers. So we're just gonna keep it simple and just say when it's um, unselected, I want it to be a one. And when it's selected, I want it to be a two. And then um, that will write it, that will relate it to that specific field in the same card. So once I get the toggle button working, then I could just delete the text box. So that's the idea here is that I'm inserting the other control into the card 
just to get it functioning and make sure it's working so I can see the value in the text box and then I don't need the text box I'll go get rid of it later um, G Gillian says how can you create an R code to link to an item a QR code sorry um, most likely in the same manner that I'm doing these with um, putting the data putting the QR code in the card and so that it's um, got that value um, that data that it's connected to so I'm not sure how the QR code is going to store the data so it might be depend on what kind of field it is but yeah you're right that um, we probably won't be able to get into the nitty-gritty of that yet okay so here we go on check on uncheck and on select so this is what do I want to happen when this is um, selected basically versus on check is going to be basically it's selected uncheck is going to be unselected so on check I want it to be um, two Let's see if it just takes that value and on uncheck I want it to be one and then on select uh, I don't know if I necessarily need to have anything in on select so let's try that out let's see if it uh, okay well it was um, basically it, the slider has some of the same options in here that it tells you what the values need to be and you know depending on where they slide the item I just let me go ahead and preview this I had a feeling that was going to be the case so we're going to go ahead and again look at the slider and look at how it works because it has it's it's going to be really useful for mobile devices for when you're you know you want them to be able to quickly like use their thumb to do something as opposed to having to get down on the keyboard and start typing so maybe if it's just an easy rating or slider those are going to be nice for being able to use them on the phones all right so i'll go ahead and add um another card here in my form for i think i have do i have number and number two so i'll put number two on here and then in number two i want to i've got a 10 in there that's the actual value of it i want to unlock that and then put a slider All right, and then so here it just kind of sticks my slider randomly in there I'll go ahead and expand this down and move the slider down here and I can make it bigger as well all right so it's got um, as far as its data it's got a bunch of information filled in so it's got a hover fill it's got all these different ways that you can make it look pretty and it's got when it's active it's got a fill color too so you could have different colors for all these different ways that people interact with all these different controls um, Carlos says can you talk about creating in power up studio versus creating without I there isn't a huge difference I just like I just like doing it in the client software because you know like I can walk away and not worry about the browser um, logging me out or you know what and I can have them offline and it's just I don't know it, it's just my preference but there isn't a huge difference as far as what you can do I mean you can I haven't really seen anything drastic that exists in one versus the other um, now when when the web version first came out it was a little buggy and it was actually sturdier um, more stable to be able to just do it in the client software but um, they've you know they've improved it dramatically see it's got data reset so it's got minimum 10 and maximum 100 and the default is 50 so if I if I have 10 as my value it should be like somewhere over here right if I'm now I don't have to have a hundred range I could have you know a rating from 1 to 10 and 10 could be the maximum but in here this is where you're going to be able to say make it represent like this value that you've selected and have it um, be represented you know compared to what right okay so here's my minimum here's my maximum the default for this one could be 50 you know like when you're filling out a new form and then you can even do tool tips etc so what I want to do is of course you can make it look very pretty by doing all these different types of fill and thickness etc you could kind of go nuts with the whole branding aspects of it and then I want it to put the right data in here though 
So let's go look at, I think this one had, let's go look at the text box first. I keep flipping back to the text box. So the data, it says default parent dot default, and that's what makes it show the value from the card that I'm in. And then this one, you used to say, so this one says data default parent dot default. And then let's go down to the slider. It just has data reset. It's really annoying. I'll do this item. I'll do parent.default. Okay, look at that. Woohoo! <laughs> Woo moment. Okay, so see the number is 10. And it's showing it's representing 10 now. So let's go, let's see if I have a number in this other one. Go select this one versus that's a 23. So look the number 23, the slider's over here, and the number um, 10, it's over here. So let me take this and actually interact with it. Let me go preview it. Oh, that's cool. So it's not necessarily updating the number that it's showing in the text box but it is showing me the number as I change the slider. And it was showing the right value in there when I changed that, um, that setting. All right. So we've got, basically I went in here and just changed it to default is parent.default for, for this. And then that way it'll just know, if it's a new form, it'll know that it doesn't have the parent, it's just a new item. Um, but if it's an existing form, it'll know that that's the field that it's tied to. Woo moment. Let's see. Okay, we got five minutes. All right, next week I'm going to, next week, first of all, Monday night, I'll be speaking at the Atlanta SharePoint user group. So if any of you live in Atlanta, I'll be there talking about Power Apps. And then, um, so that's on my speaking engagements page. And then on my Power Hour schedule, Next week, I've got SharePoint Designer 2013 Workflows and User Info, and that's being able to tap into um, information about users uh, that you used to be able to do a lot easier in SharePoint 2010 workflows. And then on the 25th, I'm going to have a friend of mine come over here and be my guest speaker, and that'll be a lot of fun, Nick Bertoli from my user group. And in the meantime, we, we did get sort of a, a primer on, you know, we kind of talked about what a lot of your controls are that are available to you and, you know, the, the concepts of what they are and how easy they'd be on mobile devices. But then we kind of delved into a little bit of, first of all, the fact that it's a little tricky to get them to actually function. And second of all, there are a ton of different settings and the settings are all different depending on which control you're going to pick. I mean, there are even um, fancy things that you can do with maps, um, showing an address from an address field, and you can do things with your camera control, make it capture a picture and make it save it to that item. And so there's a lot that we could delve into in there having to do with um, all these different ways to be able to interact in your Power App. It's just, um, you know, we were just kind of touching the surface on sort of what the controls are and then the fact that once you put the, put the control on the page, it is going to be, you know, a little bit getting used to as far as how to make it not only show what you want to see, but make it right back to the right place and actually be, you know, interactive with whatever your data source is itself. So that part apparently is the trickiest part. A lot of the fields that exist in here were pretty, the names of them were pretty self-explanatory. I could see how you could spend probably hours making these look very pretty and really getting to the nitty gritty of, you know, the visual part of the way all these function and make them do certain things when you slide them or press them or hover over them, etc. cetera. So um, hopefully you guys got at least a little bit of a taste of um, how to how to use these, how to put them in your forums, and then how to start at least attempting to set them up to you to use in your apps. Um, and also starting, I think in a few minutes is a free Power Apps webinar. I just tweeted about it uh, Monday. 
let me pull that up too. I got it off the Power Apps blog, basically. Let me go over there. I'm all sideways here. All right, so we've got the Power Apps blog, and then here it is. So this one is in a few minutes. So I'll put I'll just put this blog post in the chat window here, and I did tweet about it as well. There we go. So y'all head on over to the Power Apps um, to learn from Merwan. He's the one I think that he actually came to the when we talked about Power Apps in Power Hour, maybe or maybe it was the Flow one. I think he's the one that came to it. Anyway, um, this is what you can learn today: is the custom APIs, gateways, and data sources. Anyway, I guess I better wrap it up, and I'm going to head over to the Power Apps um, webinar. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for coming. Again, I'm Laura Rogers, SharePoint Power Hour. And thanks for figuring out and having fun just kind of on the fly digging into Power Apps with me. Have a good day.